Good morning, or whatever it is, wherever you are. So I'm looking at working on a project that does React and a bunch of other stuff, but the way you, the way they, they, they say the way you eat an elephant is one bite at a time. So we're going to start with just one library in the whole React Redux webpack, who knows what else, probably ActiveScript 6. Now I might actually have to redirect this. If they do all their... Well, we may have to do some uh, read up on ES6 if all of the documentation assumes that. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so there's tool chains. Add script tags. All right, so, well, I mean, that would have the code in it. Change log docs. Okay, so this is an alpha, so this would be the latest stable release. Artifacts. Okay, so there are some other modules. So does this include all of the modules? Or do the modules plug into this? We might need the example to work from even if we kind of kind of start it from nothing. Wait, is that? Nope, that's actually. <laughs> that's actually the file name. Uh, well, what's in there? Is that? Just in case. No, this is not. Yeah. Move that down. Uh, okay. They're using class, so this is a ES6 example. Uh, uh, 
And the DOM is different than React. So we would need all of the things. Uh, so I don't, know, I don't know that I'll ever publish this, but we'll see. Uh, I'm going to have to download stuff first. So we're mainly concerned with this one. Um, and what are these libraries? Their example showed React DOM. Uh, I hope it's just this one. Is there any indication that they are loading other files? Profiling. Not that I can see. Uh, it was like server, browser. Oh, maybe that's for like server pre-rendering. So I don't know why I need that. I don't know why I need that. I don't know why I need art. We might have to get to, would that be API reference? Direct DOM server, DOM element, synthetic events, test utilities, environment requirements. A polyfilled environment using JavaScript six pressed animation frame. And then we'll have to see if JSX is a th thing. Yeah, that, that might complicate learning it by itself. Load our React component, where our component is this thing. Can we do that natively? Uh, Uh, da, 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 da. Firefox. Okay, so that's actually well, there proper tail call optimization syntax.
Okay, so that would be, that's kind of its own thing. But we shouldn't need anything else there. Now, uh, we don't know what these are, why we need them. Uh, advanced guides. <laughs> okay, so there are topics for it, but it's going to make all the uh, documentation harder. They don't really explain what the different libraries are for. Maybe that's something back at main. Uh, script tag. Uh, no, that's like management scripts. Packages. Is there like any kind of readme here? For drawing vector graphics. Okay, so it is in fact art. Uh, React DOM. The DOM and server renders. React DOM dot render. React DOM server. Well, it does say in the browser. React is test arbitrary to be if there a particular React element type. Is valid element type. Don't need that yet. Uh, scheduler, cooperative scheduling internally, hmm, so maybe we don't need that, and then what, what do they say what React is, functionality necessary to find components, typically used with the renderer like React DOM, okay, so React DOM is separate because you can also have React Native. And I think this is a JSX list example. All right, so we need you, we need, uh, just in case we end up with some source stuff. Uh, I still want an entry point to a home document. I did edit with them. So now our working directory is here. So I might want to grab some stuff from that file because I like I know HTML, but I know that there we picked up there's like doc types. Uh, all kinds of little special invocations we've picked up over the years. Uh, right, the title doesn't do anything, so we do like H1. Uh, 
All right, so HTML, other things we need, doc type HTML. Uh, probably a good one. Just in case. Okay, so we need a home for components. They have put the component in a separate file. Which I guess for component-based development makes sense. So we're going to have, well for now we're just going to have like Right there, and then we would like to get just because I like to be able to take a project, and if I need to run it, run it on a train or something, I can do that. Uh, no, that skips downloads. So we think we need these two things. And that's cross origin because it's interesting. I mean, it is it's like it is cross origin. Is it really? I guess that's to give the stuff on the cross origin access to do stuff on the page. Script source equals React dot development dot JS. Lost a question or a quotation mark, and we want React DOM. Is that what actually the name of React dot development? React dash DOM dot development. There we go. Oop, and wait, is this only network network requests? I guess there's not technically a server involved. Uh, where is that? Oh, I know at least Chrome used to have like a resources thing. Cache storage? Uh, no, I want... Oop, okay, ah. And then I copied that down here. Okay, so that, well, it's grayed out. Yeah, it's not indicating. That it's recognizing this as a script tag. So that sort of looks like it's your URL, but it's not working. Okay, so that's there. Did I misspell it? Why are you not fetching local files? Uh, let's just double check here.
Aha! Oh, that's right. There's that. Uh, there's Chrome. There's Firefox. Okay, so what is loading? It's just not showing up in the cache or in network. Okay. <clears throat> so now our sample has an ID and then we've got a button. Now this is using all the ECMAScript stuff, so we're going to have to do a little bit of catching up on that as well. Because it looks like, well, they had a section. Create React class. Default props. Get default props. Yeah, so it's like I could make it work. But all the examples appear to be in ES6, so we're also going to have to... Well, if we're, if we're just using example things, we'll probably be okay. I'm trying to look up a few things. Uh, although it looks like I may have been better off doing an ES6 thing before doing a React thing. Oh, an E is just React Create Element. So this is operating without JSX for calling Create Element. Uh, okay, so we what's don't want to set up compilation in your build environment. I'd, I'd rather not do that early. But once again, it'll probably be all the samples. Uh, so I guess we need something like this that's just a proof of concept. Well, I guess we'll have an app, essentially. So whether this is worth A-listing depends on how often we call it. In this example, we're only calling it once. Well, okay, so they're calling it twice. And this is being treated like an app because it does this sort of startup stuff, which in Elm style, I might stick that in the HTML. Okay, so we've got that. So this has state. We're going to figure out how we want to handle state without getting into any frameworks. Don't need commas in class form. So component needs a render. Uh, 
Okay, so this is a button which replaces itself with plain text. So we can return just some text here. And that will be sufficient. And then we have app.js. And then, I can't, well, this is going to be our main combining method. I don't, hmm. <laughs> the browser support import. So this is where we do like the top, top level wiring. Uh, and then react dot or dom dot render uh, react dot create element uh, app in Okay, we got a string. So I'm not gonna worry too much about the UI. I think what I, I should just do a simple reactive form, at least for now. So following. Uh, bit rate settings calculator. <clears throat> and I think I ended up doing like kilobit rate things and like millibits per pixel because of particular limitations in the OBS controls in doing fractional bits. So we might want to re we might revisit that. Well, I think I was actually was able to get the resolution options out of OBS proper. I don't remember. Uh, but right now, we're just going to need some text fields. Now, I might want to make... Hmm. Those might want to be components. Those might want to be elements of a form. I don't know yet. I guess we start with the form and see if we're repeating things for each item. So properly thinking, as speaking, I think we have app. And then we have bitrate calculator. 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 Uh, now this will have more interesting state, but for now we just need to do uh, let's see, and does this support uh Hello world, that's doing JS, oh, we're back to the JSX examples. Div ID root, render in root. Hmm. Oh, that's just rendering an element where an element is that. Hmm. So element can take a component and render the component. Uh, what was I looking up? All right, a component example.
Okay, so that's that's actually a start. We just get this. We have a new thing. Uh, so this is returning this in our sample. So this must be tag attributes contents. Bitrate calculator, no attributes yet. No contents. Okay, is using incorrect casing. Use Pascal case. For react components or a lower case for HTML elements. Start its name with an upper lace uppercase character. Okay, so this might force us back to, can we get by without JSX? So that's making an element. Create element, oh, it's not a string in that case, we're actually passing the class. Okay, so we solved that problem. Uh, Bitrate calculator, so that still exists. Didn't need any changes. So do we support Yeah. Import declarations may only appear at top level of a module. Oh, uh, maybe. Uh, we get we get into components. Uh, they're doing everything in one file. Extracting components. <laughs> All React components must ask like pure functions with respect to their props. Uh, and Thorley talks about that. Import from, oh, right, we have, well, sure, we're not importing anything right now, or exporting anything right now. Hmm. 
Scripts which use modules must be loading by typing uh, type type equals module in the script tag. Okay, I'm done with you. Error resolving module specifier. Uh, I think I did see this. Cro uh, maybe this is dot JS because it didn't seem to. It's not a remote resource. <laughs> oh my gosh, browsers have gotten so stupid. Okay, so we'll be doing that today. Loading failed. Oh, bit reate. Well, maybe I typoed the name? Oh, indeed. Okay, so does that mean it actually couldn't find the file? Okay. Uh, right, we have to switch this back to type equals module. Error resolving module specifier. Import not found. Okay. So actually that was that was file not found that was misreporting it as a cores error. Uh Okay. Or do I actually have to do, well, we have to do bitrate calculator equals bitrate calculator. Oh, you can just do export class. Import not found default. Oh, maybe you Well, I need to know how to export a default. Can export any top level. Default exports. <laughs> oh, it needs the brackets.
E. Oh, I, I used an E somewhere. That's rather hard to find. Uh, index. No, that's React DOM render. Uh, I need to find word break. Well, it should be a limited number of files. Oh, that was a leftover character. Unexpected token. Well, no, that's not quite it. Also, I think my syntax got... What the heck happened to this? Why are you here? It's not really telling me where... Well, I'm just saying app.js. Okay, so that's saying import everything. So, in theory, this is saying import this one symbol. Oh, and that was my bracket error. Okay. Uh, but you can't really use that style of syntax with uh, finalization uh, in the document. That actually expects the file you loaded to be doing all the bootstrapping. Which isn't how Elm loads, so that's what they can get away with that. So either we put this in app or we have a separate bootstrap file. I guess the easy thing to do is put it in app for now. And having said that we're going to be using that environment, well, this makes it sort of default available, whereas every module would have to import it. Which I guess is generally good practice for modules. It's probably fine for an experiment. But that lets us do our JavaScript dependencies in JavaScript for the most part. All right, so how far can we get? <clears throat> without having to do JSX stuff. Okay, so that's JSX. We think element is name, properties, contents. Rectum.render, create element. And that's where you might want to get into doing that. Okay, so an element <clears throat> is just that stuff. Render renders an element. Uh, 
elements follow the immutable idea. Uh, but the React DOM is doing the differencing. So perhaps when we get back to Redux and company, it'll be interesting to see if they're using components or elements. Hmm. So a component can be a function. So it's either a, comp a component is either something callable or something with a render. But the render callable with props or render with its own built-in props. Hmm. Okay, so even if it's a function, it needs to be capitalized. Props are read only. Uh, function or a class. So I could use this to lay out some basic UI and see how awkward it is. <clears throat> uh, so we might in fact want const e equals react dot create element. So for this, <clears throat> And this might end up wanting to take over the heading as well. So it wants an object DOM tree. So if it's taking this over, that is no properties and Calculator. Uh, actually, that was an HTML before. Just to say we loaded the page. Hmm. Actually, this would probably be a good point to checkpoint things. Uh, which we haven't really done yet. basically a Hello World style application. Uh, 
All right, so we got a baseline point, and we are looking at something like that. Uh, so I will need a container for this. So I'm guessing that contents becomes, well, what is that syntax? Is it an array of elements? Is it just keep adding arguments? That is not a link. Uh, is that React or React DOM? Create element. That's not... Well, I think this means it's not an array, it is any number of children. So if we have that, okay, we still got our heading, uh, we would do We have a second element. Okay, so let's just keep on adding elements. Uh, we want a, might as well be a form. And it is going to itself have multiple children. Uh, so this is going to be pretty much a free form input. And we're probably going to turn these in components later. Um, so, quick refresher on what do we currently put it for form? Uh, what's got. Uh, input text. This is going to be a lot of attributes. Uh, type text. Uh, probably should have an ID of Well, that's how it's usually referred to. It's just bitrate. Name. Bitrate. Uh, value, we're going to have to fill in later. No, no, actually, it is an input. And then we'll worry about events later. I guess that's like you're invented more. And then the input can have, no, input doesn't have children. Where'd you go? There we go. Failed prop type, but of a value of prop to a form field without an read-only field. I guess that sort of makes sense. You're like, yo, if you've got a value, we can't we can't track it.
I guess we'll leave it blank for now. Uh, and we need label. Oh, I've been uh, I've been inconsistent. Label. So the main thing we need here is for, ooh, is that allowed? Uh, and this needs its text of Is it HTML4? Is that is that the way they 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 did that? Label four, yes. Okay. Let's go ahead and sketch these out. Mm. Let's see, so target is for calculation stuff. Uh, I might do just calculate millibits per pixel for starters. Uh, so we need resolution uh, that is probably going to be a select uh, frames per second probably as well so now we're into a whole other animal I don't say what this is for, but it's probably close enough. Uh, label for resolution title. Now, perhaps a component that listed out its items would be in order here, but we'll have to develop into that. So select implies the type, so it's just got an ID. And a name. And then it this has children. And you have values. Hmm. So what did I do for this actual script? will be a script. Uh, okay, so I explicitly did resolution options. Uh, and that we were able to fill in. And we're kind of matching stuff up with, hmm. <clears throat> well, we might just do two for now for proof of concept. And maybe once we get into more of a component-based thing, we can find a better option for mapping this back. So the easy thing to do for now is to say that's the value. Uh, do you need 
we need selected. And we need a contents. And the next one you commonly see is 480. I am going to have to have this a date at some point to do actual calculations on it. Keep this my HTML page. All right. Um, I guess we do an empty div. Well, no, because this has to be contents of. be allowed I'm pretty sure and then resolution frame rate uh, we could do 10 oh there's my brackets again Nope. Except I copied that, it can't both be selected. Ooh. Missing after argument. Ah. Uh... Thirty-four. Oh. Oh, once again, use value on props on select. Uh, well, it's complaining. It's not telling me what line in mine. First one, maybe? Or does it mean props, props? Uh, you need to provide a value prop in a form field without an on change handler. A read only field. Is that the, okay? So that's that one. Uh, so now, why are you complaining? Oh, because we have still have selected. So it's doing some special stuff, even with basic HTML tags here. All right, so we've got that, and then 
you would need some place to put out <clears throat> an answer. Uh, oh, see, last time it was uh, millibits per pixel. Because we couldn't show, because the controls were rounding the points. But this is typically shown as, mil, uh, as bits per pixel, even though it's always fractional. Uh, this one will be read only, so it can have a value, although that value is. Not really calculated right now. Missing after property list. Uh, fifty four or fifty. All right, so we've got that. So this is functional in props. So we can define props. So we have a bit rate. We have a resolution, which really needs to be something better, but for now we'll go with the strings. Just to get our controls updating. And we have a frame rate. And then I think we're going to have to calculate the bits per pixel as a prop on update. All right, is it going to complain about that? Okay, not going to complain about that. <clears throat> uh, so now, I think we're going to have to make this read only just to shut it up for a bit. So then we can say value is, is it this that props dot bit rate? Uh, right. Hmm. Not two string? No, it's not two string. Uh, well, actually, two string might be a function as well. This dot. Oh, now it's telling us undefined. Oh, state. I was thinking state. Or, or did I type state when it should have been props? Uh, we had the sample project up oh, state. Uh, okay, there's the set state, and if this dot state, okay, so state is not props. Okay, and that goes there. Now, does it care about the string? Now, that did have the useful property of telling us it was an, an error. <clears throat> okay, so now our value is this dot state dot resolution. Our value is this dot state dot frame rate, and our value is this dot state dot bits per pixel. And what we can see here is that. Oh, it's just putting a function directly in here rather than a method that calls back. Uh, okay, so main concepts, components and props. Function props. Uh, 
Okay. So props must be things that get passed down. Yeah, super props, super props. So this would be, and we're assuming that I'm good. I'm hmm 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 hmm. Can hmm. Yeah, I don't know if props go back. It would be props dot bitrate. Props dot resolution would allow us to specify all this. And then this is a calculated field, so it wouldn't even be exposed there. But we could in app. Say bitrate. And that would get passed through. Okay, so that's props. Uh, discuss in the next section. Rendering the component. Composing components, yeah, name equals. Props are read only. Next section, state and life cycle. <clears throat> Rectum.render, tick, render our element. So clock is a function of props.date. Uh, so tick is re-rendering. Should be an implementation detail of clock. Okay, so it has to be a class to have state. This dot state uh, constructor is date new date. Life cycle methods, component did mount, component will unmount. So this is where this thing is setting up a timer. And this is this dot tick. So we're doing a method to do the update. Do not modify state directly. Set state notifies the system. State maybe you know, relying on the values or calculating the state. function rather than an object. Receive the previous state. Oh, if you're doing something that depends on the previous state, okay. Fetch post then. What's that? And hello, oh. That's a raid. Welcome. <laughs> well, thank you. Ah. Okay. Uh, well, I'm making things a little bit difficult for myself by trying to take the, like, sort of, you know, the, the one bite at a time thing. 
so I'm trying to not deal with getting a compiler for JSX and just use it as a library. So that's a little bit uh, extra stuff, and I'm sure I will have to get into JSX at some point. I just want to take things one step at a time. Uh, I've had to do a little bit of, well, I guess JSX also gets into using examples, but a little bit of uh, ES6 stuff in order to uh, be able to use examples effectively. Well, welcome. Were you were you doing React stuff as well? Uh, app development titanium. Hmm. Now I know there used to be a thing called titanium. Uh, let's see. But that may have fall. That may have disappeared. Yeah, maybe it was Accelerator. Mobile first platform. It, it, yeah, it was kind of like a cross-platform thing. Okay, so it is the the same old cross-platform environment. I've forgotten the details, but I, I knew I knew it was a, a thing that was sort of out there. And they do not have a good intro to what it is right now. Yeah, single platform that recompiles everywhere. Run native everywhere. Okay, so it's a. Yeah, so, yeah, so I guess is it is it um, is it more like uh, the browser frame, or is it more like the sort of like um, React Native type of thing? where you've got sort of an abstraction layer, and then the things you're making are mapping down to native components in the different environments. React Native, okay. So they, they've got, they're, they've got a, a application or a platform independent interface, but then they can map it all down to native controls. Cool. All right, so I was looking for something more like this. So they were doing an arrow function. I guess the question I wanted to answer is what does that look like if you are doing methods for the state updates? Do you still want to handling events? Do you still want to wrap the closure around it? Unclick activate lasers. So if it's a function, it's implicitly handle click. Then it's implicitly called. Uh, do we need to wrap it? <clears throat> handle click. The, okay, they have a this. Uh, that's depending on previous state. <clears throat> all right, so bitrate calculator. Oh, and actually having to have all this together might actually. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I don't. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure if these can be made separate components or not. That'll be an experiment for later. Uh, so we would have something like. Uh, changed bitrate. Is a function. It was this dot set state. We don't necessarily need state. Um, with bitrate as. So that's one using state. Would that be because uh, this is this dot state? 
this is just setting like equals true. So I need a way to get the value from the control. Or since that got mapped from a prop, would the current value be available as the prop of, well, it wouldn't be this. It would be E. Let's just start with, uh, I'm gonna change bitrate. Oh yeah, change bitrate. How does that show up? Would that just be the event handler? I had one of these that was, yeah, handle, click, E. So event. And we would want to hook that up to, was it on change? Uh, error occurred. Changed bitrate is not defined. Hmm, so it right. Okay, so that's a per character update. Um, which is not necessarily what I want. Target null. Ah, input. Bubbles, or maybe there's multiple events here. Target null, oh no, current target. Oh. So it must be resolving that function for us. I know I'm looking at the previous event. Yeah, the current target input bit rate. Oh, uh, and what was I always using? My other app, it's not change. No, it is change. You're right, it's on input that's every character. So why are you giving me every, well, we'll deal with that in a minute. Okay, yeah, thanks for coming by. Uh, and I should make a uh, note. Uh, there we go. Have a look at you later, all right. Uh, not a function. So I guess not all of the events have a target. I need to look for certain events. Oh, oh, right, because we're specifying value. This uh, target and current. Well, there's target again, but it said it was null. Oh, uh, events probably expire. Or because they're events. Uh, can we ask for value? Uh, so yeah, it keeps trying to append whatever we type to current value, and then it goes, oop, nope, reset. <clears throat> so that should be this dot set state uh, e dot target dot value. Oh, and actually, the way this works, I have to handle every event. This is undefined. 
So that means we need to have a bound function. Okay, or that is where we get into, although I might have to pass the event. Yeah. So we have to do, not even necessarily calling it, if we're doing it that way. Yeah. Mm, so six to one half does the other on that. Unless ES6 has a special syntax for getting those. Uh, that's modules. Okay, that's arrow functions. Prototype dot bind. We want to preserve and send the next argument. Oh, but you're, this is actually in JSX. Always this. E, handle, click E. Event, uh, ah. Okay, so so far, no sign of anything super special. <clears throat> All right, so we can update that now. I did have a numeric value in here. This is always going to be a string. Uh, I'm rusty on. It's like parsint. Parsint string radius. Even if I do like EEE, -E -E, but I can do numbers just fine. And I should probably make this. Um, do I have any of those currently? Numeric anyway. Uh, type equals text. It's an actual input filter, HTML5. Oh, type equals number, okay. Uh, so you, well, this one's special. Uh, well, that's a select, so that gets a little weird. No, no, number. Okay, we well, can't use those because it's read-only. Uh, however, this one we can do... Ooh. That has un unfortunate consequences, though. Uh, so does that actually null or what? Uh... Oh, received, nan, okay. So that actually comes up as nan. Uh, and isn't it like, 
is Nan or something. Is Nan. Uh, is that a global or a, okay, it's a global function. Um, our bit rate equals Uh, if not is nan bitrate, then so I can type other letters in there, doesn't matter, we can type that. Oh, okay, so we have to allow, hmm, if e dot target dot value is nothing. Then oh, a can a controlled input of type number to be uncontrolled. Forms maintain their own state and base it user input. In the single source of truth that renders a form also controls what happens in that form on subsequent user input. Any form element whose value is controlled by React is controlled component. Maybe it doesn't like setting null. Well, this is the problem I've run into before where you essentially have to maintain a text version of the input and then you convert that. You either maintain a numeric value separately or convert it as needed. Oh, so this is their solution. They go through and rebind things in the constructor. So this is a form that renders a label and an input. We have an event and a submit. Is dot state dot value handle change state dot value the react state the source of truth trolled component every state mutation on associated handler function okay yeah yeah that's fine. So the, the, the colors here almost worked, but lots of things don't like the high contrast scheme. Oh, so that's, I don't know if that's like transparent color or something. Text area value. Select tag. Let 
value, your raising value, we call this dot state dot value. File input handling multiple inputs. Name attribute. Oh, they're having a single input for all of the stuff. I mean, I guess if it's a bunch of, like, if you just got a bunch of text controls, maybe. Controlled input null value. The input is still editable. You have accidentally set value to an undefined or null. It becomes editable after a short delay. Well, he re-rendered it. <laughs> For every way your data can change. Form data is handled by the DOM itself. Use a ref. React.createRef. What's this dot input? React.createRef. Ref equals this dot create. This dot input dot current dot value. Oh, it lets you get a reference to the element so you can grab it. It still doesn't really tell us about things becoming uncontrolled. Uh, I did not intend to do that. Undefined. So by setting a null, so what we actually have to do is explicitly set this to that because we have no other value we can set it to that's blank. And then we do that. So that, well, yeah, we might end up with some duplicated stuff like uh, frame rate it might be very similar. And then maybe you could say, oh, well, we'll use the same thing and use the name property. Uh, so that's the other easy one, though. So in theory, that is very, you know, like just changed numeric or something. So it only is all that is changing. Ooh. Right, you're a select, so you might be something. Oh, how about we hook, how about we hook it up? So that would be on you. You're no longer read only. Uh, yeah, I misspell things a lot. Thank you. Uh, and that is the function. Uh, 
All right, so that control can change. Uh, resolution, we just have to store as a string for now, as it's currently defined. Uh, <laughs> so we should have to worry about blanks in that field. Uh, we're not parsing ints currently. So that just looks like uh, e.target.value. And once again, we have to wire it up. Oh, wait, why did my... Oh, because I was copying the wrong thing. Or well, really what... And it's something I'd like to have actual data associated with this somehow, but I don't know if we can have a different value than the... Well, the value can definitely be different than text displayed. But it might still have to be translatable to text. But we're going to need data, I mean, sort of parsing it out and using the numbers, to actually do some math here. But I've probably gone too long without a checkpoint. Um... Change event handlers with state update. <clears throat> All right, I'm out of water. It's probably about time for a break anyway. I, you know, should get up and stretch every once in a while. So I'm going to do that, and then to do math with this, I'm going to need this as some kind of value. So I have to see what, if we can put like an object with a height and a width in here, or a small array or something, uh, as value, and is that accepted? And then you could get into like, can we generate the options? Which it's a function, so we should be able to. If we can put other value, well, you could still generate it. But you have to have a way to map the value back to the thing, anyway. Maybe our value would be as an index into the array. We will have to see. I will be back in a few minutes. So it doesn't really say like node starting up anywhere, but, oh, no, wait. Well, node supervisor is a separate project that I'm using that auto restarts when things crash and stuff, which is occasionally annoying because they sometimes get things that crash every time. Dip a doo. Do you want to stay? Ah, look at it, look at it. Young place, so many berries. So many berries. Uh oh. Oh, uh, here we do. We have bear, too. Come on, we stand here. Uh, let's stand on something that's not movable. Oh, it got me. Oh, my God. Oh, that, I, I felt that too. Oh. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh. Join this chest because I have the ring. Okay, 
kills me when I destroy the chests. Um, let us continue. Oh, oh, that's a boss room. And welcome back. <clears throat> All right, so this is Dom construction. If we poke into this, we're ultimately sticking a value string in here. So either we can parse it back out into its component parts and just use it as a string, <clears throat> or we can define it as data and then probably have a startup process where we turn it into uh, like a keyed object so you can then look it back up or I just do an array and have the values be numbers uh, it's not as mnemonic when you see the, the values flying around Okay, and the other problem is that if I develop this, if, I, if this ever develops in a direction that does state saving, that would effectively be storing, right, 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 right. They've got this value abstraction. It's not this item is selected. It's this value is, so actually the state would then have to be the array index rather than anything that represented the actual resolution. <clears throat> but since value has to be a string in an element, presumably the select value has to be the same type, which is means it has to be a string. Uh, so that's like a, a pre-built component, react select, Yeah, so it looks like there's a pretty common one. But I don't really, I don't know that I really want to be getting into libraries right now. Okay, so this does all the fancy UI stuff. Uh, and you can specify options as hmm. They let you specify options as data. Well, it's value and label. So the component takes that in, well, here we go. These are live examples, right? Of course, they might not be actually implementing this as a select. Is the thing, it might be a select like thing. Uh, Input Yeah, 
Yeah, it might be a select like thing that's not actually implemented with Yeah. So they're doing everything themselves. Uh Okay, so that's a singular. And the other stuff might only show when it's open. So their solution is to have a, a component with its own state managed however the heck it wants to. Which is kind of what I suspected anyway. So if we'd like to have our value be something useful, well, if it's an array of two things, it can be an array of one thing, right? Must be scalar value if multiple is false. Right. Okay, so that was kind of what I suspected. So if we have const Properly speaking, it feels like an array. <clears throat> but array values are either going to be something like that, or uh, 480, something like that. Nope, nope, these would be objects in this case. So this is nice and compact, but we would have to convert it into string form every time we needed it. Oh, and this is a typo in it. <clears throat> This would permit us to, oh, this can't be const then, can it? Uh, this would permit us to come back and have like value, blah, 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 uh, which can be automatically calculated. And then we can search it in our set of values. Maybe I map it and then set it constant? Uh, huh. Well, no, I kind of want, I was going to say I could use some destructuring, but we do kind of want the entire thing. Because uh, we want to say, equals, hmm, does the x6 have string interpolation? It appears too. So if that's what's simple, what's complex? Oh, multi line strings.
Anyway, uh, do these have any, do these follow Ruby conventions or is it any old string? Oh, template strings use back ticks. So we don't have to, so that's their special syntax. Uh, equals, um, uh, no, escape. Res dot width times res dot height back to uh, I was saying map. I guess for each should actually work if we're updating this. All right, did we get the let syntax right? Okay. Mm, I don't have an easy way to actually use this value here. Because the thing we put in here, well, no. I don't have to use that. I can use resolution.value. Uh, although it still ends up being stored to the string. So I would have to search through, find the one I wanted, and then pull out its value. So changed resolution then means we want to mm, what are the search methods? Or do we have uh, JavaScript? Concat copy passes a test. It returns the index dot find. Uh, function res where res dot value equals e dot target dot value that will give us an index well no actually I don't have to find it here no, oh, and I do have to find it through this. If I want to use that that abstraction, so we probably either I have a copy of the value. That duplicates everything. Or I have to use some literal method here. To look up the value we want. Uh, you know what? The other way to do this is resolutions. Mm, just pick one. Uh, and then this will still have to search. Uh, var. And then if I is those resolutions. That's pulling the value. Uh, 
No. Resolutions is undefined. But I need the one that's... So 15 is where it's complaining. Are there any scoping rules for classes? Oh, this is supposed to be zero. Maybe that's what it's complaining about? No. Prototype bind. No, that's not what I'm looking for. Class variables out of scope. Access to this. And maybe private properties would sort of cover it. Method in a class. <laughs> Private properties. Okay, that's not, yeah. Var name, get name, set name. Okay, that's symbol, it's a var. It is in the enclosing scope of the class. The constructor is using it. So why are we getting a not found error? File is saved. It says line 15. Did, oh, you know what? I bet for each doesn't return something. Okay, so in that case, the other way to do this would be All right, so now if I go back to my other file, like button, and we add, let's see, it's 960 by 540. Oh, no, because we're I didn't actually convert this to to map here. Ooh. Well, ES6 has a splat operator, right? <laughs> All 
no, no, this is frame rate. Changed resolution. Mm. Resolutions dot map. Turn E option value we'll have to calculate. Uh, I guess value becomes oh no actually becomes res dot value. Can I actually cheat here? And the text is res.value. Uh, oh, right. This, just, this gives us an array, an expected expression. Resolutions. Uh, each child should have a unique key prop. Oh, so this is coming up as what's well, a warning? So we should be able to look at this. Okay, so we'll, we'll accept an array. But it wants us to have a key now. Okay. Okay, so the width and height information probably isn't actually useful here. Okay, so now we have a table-driven thing here. It's just a little bit more verbose than this. All right, so we've got 640 by 360. We've got... 480, although we could probably also, so if we start on the line, we do macro, we go forward one, we insert W, uh, well, word, 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 insert H, new line, Q, at Q, at, at, there's you could multiply this, but it's a few enough lines. It's not going to be that big a deal. All so we might want to pick a different default option, but that's something. Uh, and that might be enough to actually do some math. Um, expanded. Uh, I am doing a little exercise in trying to use React, and what I'm doing for the exercise is a stream bitrate calculator, because at times I've had to make trade-offs between uh, resolution and frame rate, uh, such as for now I'm running at 10 frames per second, so I can get decent quality under what I can stream at comfortably. Uh, so frame rate is just a number. Uh, it might be convenient to have that as a, a list. So we could then derive all of this stuff as well. Uh, did I actually have that? 
Resolution options, yeah, FPS options. Uh, resolution options actually isn't a bad name for it, but... Resolutions... Uh... I think this has been more JavaScript style lately. Okay, so we've still got our list here. And then we have our frame rate options. Let's pick up them FPS options here. We need to frame rate thus far in this. Uh, and that will be a straight up array. Uh, so that's easier to have a value without having to specify as much stuff. So I'm not as concerned about making sure it's in the list for that one. Uh, and then this could probably extend this idea. Frame rate options. Okay, so we expand that. No, you. All right, anyway, so that just gives me more options. Uh, so the advantage, they had the idea of doing a single handler is that we could do all the math there. So, should you attempt to do only a single save state in an event handler? Uh, or set state? Is there any problem with doing that? Batches, state updates, and lifecycle methods. Wait for the event handling to finish before we're rendering. Not batched in Ajax and set timeout event handlers. Immediately update the state of the component. Uh, so we'd have to use functional form. Use state after has been update callback argument. We want to have one function that calculates our bits per pixel that gets triggered from all of the events. Okay, so this is a set state with the pre state props. And it's a set, st okay, so this is, yeah, this is functional form. Uh, well, that would be an invalid value anyway. Uh, <laughs> so if we have a method to calculate it, hmm. Right, we think it's going to have to be itself a state because we have to pull it out. 
Well, no, we could do a functional derivation of it. The only time that would be a problem is if we did like this one, where we can change our target around, and sometimes they're inputs and sometimes they're outputs for some of these things. Uh, I don't think, yeah, we've got a target. That's how I resolved it here. So we had a target and a calculated because it might not hit the target for one. Mm. We could actually just remove this. Design build sites. Account manager for a digital agency. HTML. Hmm. Well, if your goal is to do stuff for work, you'd probably, you know, something you could use would probably be helpful, but that depends on your stack. And then the tricky part is figuring out what's approachable. Next, uh, did you, does HTML include CSS? Because uh, that would be, that would get into some of the styling and stuff that might be somewhat relevant. Uh, if you have a particular uh, content management tool, that would probably be a good place to go. Uh, the code side of things gets a little bit hairy. Everyone's own CMS, okay. You know, it, yeah, whatever you need to make that work. So, like, usually I'm picking a project and maybe a new technology to use with it. I have enough background knowledge to try and pick my battles on that a bit. So, like, the thing I potentially have to work on now is an application that uses this technology and a bunch of other technologies, and I'm trying to pick as small a piece of that as I can uh, to learn that one piece. And then maybe they'll learn another piece or add in a piece. Uh, but knowing where those boundaries are is going to be harder if you don't have as much technical background. Because, like, even, like, I'm looking at the documentation on the React stuff, and it's assuming a lot of these other pieces, some of which I'm trying to put aside right now. And then all of those pieces are things you have to set up. Uh, you might be able to find uh, things that sort of set everything up for you, but that often requires a little bit of infrastructure itself that you have to know how to operate. Uh, so, yeah. HTML. Uh, CSS is the style. So that gets into... Uh, so if we pick any, pick any element here, and, oh, and if you haven't found it already, uh, developer dev tools are your friend. I've Got it in muscle memory. So this is uh, shift control I. Yeah. And you can also find it in the menus um, somewhere. Web developer toggle tools. Yeah. Control shift I. I haven't found that yet. It's your friend. Uh, so this gives you the DOM, which is your HTML. Uh, and then this will also be the interface to style. So like this. Uh, page has your top level body has some things that probably have to do with uh, cutting things off properly for the sidebar and mobile uh, so body has margin zero doesn't actually have an effect here we probably really want to find something more targeted uh, so like this is a code yeah so they're applying a uh, property uh, font property to these code elements to make them look a little bit more readable for code samples so for that, you have to worry about these rules that say if it's a code or a preformatted element, uh, then use this. 
Uh, and you'll find other things uh, inherited from HTML, uh, inherited from div. Yeah, paragraph element is your sort of basic text element. And they're saying, oh, well, it has a certain margin, but this one got overridden by something more specific. Uh, font, line height. Eh, this is a little bit of effect. Max width, not really seeing it here. And then there's a bunch of other stuff. You, know, like you can get computed properties for what's actually applying. And for some things, you can find multiple rules. And uh, hmm, they, they might have some framework going on that's doing these properties, uh, saying where it's coming from. But yeah, the whole idea of selectors applying colors and attributes, uh, this can get very, very complicated uh, when you get into sizing and browser particularities. You know, and then mobile views. Uh, but if you're doing more of like a, you know, you, you know HTML, that lets you style your HTML. Uh, and although oftentimes you'll have frameworks that provide a lot of that for you based on the attributes you put on your HTML tags. So like Bootstrap and the other frameworks will kind of give you a, a toolkit for that. And then the code is actually JavaScript, unless your company's backend is written in the language called Java, which I know is confusing, but they are separate languages. <clears throat> uh, and you wanted to be you know, like generating HTML on the backend, for instance, then maybe that would get into Java if that's your platform for the backend that's generating pages. But unfortunately, JavaScript uh, is a large, it evolved from something very simple, simple into a large, complicated ecosystem. So getting started on that is, can be challenging. There should be tutorials out there that try to break it down. I, I started in a much simpler time, so I don't have as good a handle on those. All right, so a pure functional derivation would solve the state update problems. It would get the code written to do the calculation. And then maybe we can tackle the state update issue. So do we even care if it's using the state? Well, we can, uh, that should be fine. Uh, so how did I do that here? Just for consistency. Calculate uh, is detail. Uh, oh, that was, yeah, that was derived from bits per pixel, I think. Complete setting, <clears throat> optimize, update bits per pixel. Uh, that's based on the optimization target. And it's getting the settings, so that considered it... Oh, so that actually considered width and height as separate settings. Hmm. Different way to look at it. Uh, but right now, it is just calculate bits per pixel. <clears throat> so we're going to assume we have our this.state. Uh, This.state.bitrate, view rate, divided by, so this.state that resolution. This is where I might want to possibly think about, do I want to change this? Dot width times this dot resolution dot height. And I could possibly even pre-calculate this. Uh, times this dot state dot FPS. And instead of printing value, we would hit this dot uh, calculate bits per pixel. 
This is a direct function call with this. Uh, there's our app. Okay, this dot resolution, <clears throat> or this dot, I uh, did this dot res, not this dot state, didn't I? Uh, this dot state, this dot state, this dot state. Mm, I see it's NAND for value attribute. So what are we coming in here with? Uh, object resolution. Uh, oh, you know what? I was copying my other application. OK, that's a very, very precise bit rate. Uh, so that's not expected. So like right now, I think it's like 864, 10. Oh, why did you? Uh-oh, maybe I, I didn't properly test this. Uh, so you're actually updating. I didn't properly test this one. Okay, so calculations appear to be doing something. Uh, changed resolution. Undefined, undefined. Oh, I have to return this. <laughs> oh. Wait. I thought find found the index. Apparently it finds the thing. Uh, but if it's not found, what does it do? Yes, 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 it's unreachable. It returns undefined. Uh, you know what? Actually, this might be bad scoping. Well, does it work? Well, it works. All right, so if we're at this and 10, eh, it's actually a little bit low, but it's kind of okay. If we were doing there, hmm. I might kind of like the millibits per pixel a little bit. Uh, I taught myself programming back in the day of basic listings in magazines a bit. Well, I, I got into some C and, well, quick basic C, other things. I did go to college. It was computer science, but in a liberal arts. Uh, then worked for some years doing some embedded stuff that kind of turned into IT and some tech support. And I've been off dependent since then. All right, so the like, other streams would be at 1230.8. So it's working in the sense that it's, it's changing and reacting. Uh, so that's a checkpoint. Uh, fix, resolution, selection, uh, calculate bits per pixel. So now if we want, did want to do this as a interactive reciprocating settings, 
What would we have to do? That's no, uncontrolled components. Uh, string substitution, array methods. I've got too much stuff open. Uh, classes. Uh, so set state, prev state. Uh, we do something with the prev state. Can that then do another set state? State after it's been updated, do a logic in the callback. Hmm. So set state is a function that's expected to return the value. If we call set state in there, what's it going to do? Well, I guess what we want to do is we've got a function that calculates it. And we might even want to leave that as a pure function. So we're set state. Mm, right, because we want to update this. We also want to update this using that updated value. So I could do set set state frame rate frame rate bit rate, but I need this entire assemblage of stuff updated. Unless I convert this into argument 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 straight up function, and I just have to pass all the stuff every time we call it. I don't know what the appropriate search term for that is. It's like we want to do calculated updates to other properties. React state with calculated fields. In this dot calculated synthesis of that state is dependent data. <clears throat> All data which causes update and render is already in state and props. So is this just any old property? Component did update. The related props have changed. Component did update will cause one more render just for state change. Component will update is a get derived state from props for such a class. Yeah, for pure functional, what I've got is fine. There's a version of this where we sort of change what we're op our optimization target is and different things become read-only. Update A, update B, result, result. Uh, there was just talking about that. Uh, set state in component did update will cause one more render for state change. Component will update provides more flexibility, but there's they recommend can't get new value after immediate set state. Yeah.
Yes, you have to use the functional format to get the updated value. An async operation. That gets the updated value, but if we set state in there, immediately mutate, but creates a pending state transition. Okay, set state, function, entered. But what if we want to set state again? I guess we can just try it. So if we set state the frame rate, uh, well, no, because it's set state and return. Then it's a function that takes the old state, gives you the new state, lets you return a state. We want something that happens after the state update. So this is asynchronously queuing to set frame rate to frame rate. What if we did another up, well, no, because it, it still has to be two calls because one's a function. And then we did a call to do prev state to bits per pixel. So we only have this hooked up on frame, frame, frame rate changes. Oh, we're, it's not accurate because this needs to be this dot state dot bits per pixel, which we need to calculate once on start, but it's working okay now. So it's like we have this dot state and then well this is yeah we're setting the state so we can, so we don't we're not in the update loop yet so we calculated on startup And then everything, it's a change frame rate. Uh, I'll leave that one alone. Ooh, oh, no, okay, so that updated. I guess I just hit the, hit the same number again. Wait, is that a, no? Oh, we're getting full, fully interactive on that one. Wait. Okay, now. Oh, was it going into exponential? No.
So that I believe. That I believe. That I don't believe. Uh, let me get me back to something I sort of know here. So adding more bitrate should make that number larger. Removing it should make it smaller. But that, going from input, from up to down, that made it better. So that, is that an ordering issue? Uh, what are we calculating with? So before we're there, and this is a bit rate, Okay, so we do our calculations with those numbers. Okay, setting one, bitrate 12. So this does not do what we want. Does flipping it do what we want? Setting one, bitrate 12. All right, so get derived state from props. Where is this recommendation? Uh, I guess creating your own base component classes. A change to props or state are called in the following order, be re-rendered. Get derived state from props. Should component update render. Get snapshot before update. Component did update. Component will update, will receive props, our legacy. Render. <clears throat> Constructor mount did update is not called for the initial render. Operate on the DOM to do network requests props must be wrapped in a condition. Get snapshot, which is rare. Unmount. Should component update. Get derived state from props. Calling the render method. It, well, it returns an object to update the state. Rare use cases, state depends on changes in props over time time. Example data fetching response to a change in props when a prop changes when a prop changes
Maybe we can catch some information about the DOM. Get derived state from error, component did catch. Legacy methods. Set state, default props. You call from your components. Queues changes to the component state. Does not always immediately update the component. It may batch or defer update till later. Component did update or set state callback after an update has been applied. But we've seen that we went to one. Well, actually, yeah, all of these are updated by one, one cycle or offset. I guess maybe all functional updates are deferred or implemented differently somehow. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I've, I guess it, yeah, it is sparse updates. But we need to calculate what the updated value. So I might have to make this a pure function and calculate the updated, well, it would have to become a function to get the entire state. And we will have to manually pass an object with the updated bit rate. Then we can return a bits per pixel update and a bit rate update at the same time. Or set state in component did a update causes one more render just for state change. Component will update has been removed or depreciated. This recommendation was you're keeping a calculated field around. I guess is maybe caching the computation. Yeah, it's immediately calculating the result. That's from props. Not, well, yeah, I can, redundant intermission is fine. The problem is we might want to take this in the direction of doing multi-directional calculation, where you could fill in, where you could calculate the, the best resolution for a bit rate, frame rate and bits per pixel target, or best frame rate. So sometimes they're inputs and sometimes they're outputs. I guess the other option would be to actually conditionally set this value based on your current mode. So if you need to keep a state because you're changing it, you use the state. 
And if you need to calculate something, you just call a function that does the calculation. Which we'd have to actually implement that. And then every place we render a control value would have to have a switch. So it's either that or we have to have some way to pass the updated version of the state to our calculate function as we change each thing. All right, so what would, so if we were in an Elm context or a Redux context, this would be an event sent back to the top level. The top level would have to calculate the updated model for both fields <clears throat> and then update the state. Uh, in that context, You could calculate an intermediate new state, although you'd be explicitly passing state around in Elm, so you can definitely do that, and then calculate things off of that updated state. And set state, well, you could sort of do that and then calculate the complete new state, call it to set state. It'll replace everything, sometimes with themselves. But we do have to calculate the intermediate state to use with calculate. And we would need to explicitly pass it then. because we've got a previous state. Uh, let's take this back down to one of these. Uh, so that leaves us with a singular thing where we have a much more complicated function here. Where we have to return frame rate, frame rate, but we also have to do, so we've got prev state. state dot frame rate equals frame rate I don't know if we should care about mucking with that or not
Oh, you know what? This is the wrong one to test it on. Because we were mainly seeing this on our bitrate field. Uh, state is undefined. Uh, oh, right, because uh, there are other places we calculate. We call this uh, this dot state. Okay, 120, 120, 12, 12, 1, 1, 1, 12, 0, 0, 120, 120. And then the other one we need to fix up <clears throat> is resolution. That first update didn't go through. Okay, we got to the point where we want to do this. So we change this to 392. And Oh, uh, and then it gets updated here, which is why it's one cycle behind. Okay. All right, so this will uh, well, yeah, three sixty. So some way to remember settings would be nice, but it will do the math. So this doesn't even need to be a member function right now. Uh, that's how we're calling it, though. But a member function makes it sound like it's going to use its internal data. Uh, nope, missed one. Okay, so everything's reacting to that. Uh, habit mainly? Uh, so my intent for this was mainly to try and figure out React. All of the React examples are in EX6, so I have to front load that a little bit. Uh, at some point, I need to set aside some time to go through all the ES6 stuff and hammer down on what those features are. For now, I just had to deal with enough that I can work with examples and kind of continue forward there. So if there's anything with VAR, I just haven't gotten there yet. 
I've been aiming more for fully compatible style for a while. Wait, uh, I took the default value out and... Oh, right, because we're setting it here. That's why the default value is out. Um, calculate bit per pixel uh, as... Mm, computed state value. So that we have the option, and I might still separate bits per pixel, but in general, the option to have this do a multi-targeting mode. And I'm focusing more on the React side of things than the UI side of things. So at some point, I would like to have something better than a bunch of boxes. Uh, this is the design I had for the OBS script version we have a very limited set of controls here. I guess I should probably do like units and things here as well. And this probably needs a little bit of rounding so it's not quite so crazy. Uh, now that is more of a strict formatting issue. Hmm. Well, at the moment, it's a fully calculated value, so if you happen to truncate it, but since that's, eh, no, it's read-only. So I should be able to put a different value under the control without causing any big, di big issue. Uh, all right, did we commit that? Yes, we did. Uh... So how do we, is that, format a float to fixed, uh, let's give it at least three digits. Actually, that might not. So if I do 4030.88, is that? Right, millibits. That's probably good. Oh, and I was just like, right, I was changing all the stuff around. Uh, so for comparison, you get very different results. Why do you get very different results? Times height times FPS bit rate. That is doing a floor. We're doing the scale. How are we getting different answers there? How about... that? Okay, well that's at least comparable. Wait, is 90... millibits? Oh, 
That would seem like 9 millibits, not 90 millibits. Maybe my place is off by one. Uh, maybe my kilobit rate, where is KBR? Okay, 6,050. K bit rate, bit rate divided by a thousand. target millibits per pixel and millibits per pixel. Right, because that's kilobit rate. So we're actually handling that as bits. Hmm, but these actually seem right-ish. That one was handling it internally. Hmm. That says, but that's just showing bits per pixel, not. And millibits per pixel is times a thousand. And that's like already millibits per pixel. How are we getting such different numbers? Well, this one would need modification. To do any other resolution. Uh, those are the smallest numbers we can throw in there. Uh, that's saying our smallest numbers uh, you gets 43. What? I think it's 520. Uh, oh, we misplaced a Misplaced a parenthesis there. And then this might be where I need that extra precision. Okay, that's more believable. Uh, so this needs to be bit rate times a thousand to be kilobit rate. So that was compounding errors there. And then our other setup, 0.9. Is three right? Is that, is that counting the first one? Or is it just exactly 0.9? Okay, so that's four digits after the point. Uh, all right, so that is a very, very basic proof of concept. Uh, it doesn't get into asynchronous requests. Um, 
doesn't do well the mode switching is probably a very very weird case Uh, we'd probably end up with something like this, or update. It's per pixel, gets called, okay, so that gets called from several places. So optimize, just updates the bit per pixel. These uh, do a, uh, actually kind of a similar data set. And update the bits per pixel. But I think that is a reasonably stable place to call it for today, since it's kind of getting to getting around to lunchtime. And then I'm gonna have to look. Well, hello world, uh, state and life cycle. Oh, conditional rendering is probably a thing when you get into real. Real apps. So it's just, okay, just a function. Use variables to store elements. Log in button, log out button. Or are you storing elements? Anyway. Oh, button equals and then render the button. Okay. So we've got, uh, oh, lists and keys. We sort of bumped into that. We kind of did forms without reading up on forms. Lifting state up. Okay. So yeah, if we wanted to have like a component for each of these controls, but the form's still doing the calculation. Uh, so there's probably a fair bit of stuff we could still do just in React. And we've kind of got an idea what this is. So I might also want to loop back and introduce a compiler. Or is, I don't know, does anything have... Does anything actually have JSX support? TypeScript. Used to get a closure compiler. It might be a different JavaScript. ESLint. Beautify. Uh, Uh, I'll never reach browser. <laughs> uh, not even on the page. I thought at one point there was like some versions. Where they were like playing around with that that idea. But I'm not really finding anything here. So yeah, it needs to do the transformation. Well, it, it ends up calling React functions, specific functions. So I guess a generic support wouldn't work anyway. So there's that, which would get, get you back to probably more typical usage. 
Then we've got a bunch of stuff here and possibly advanced guides. Uh, and perhaps possibly double, doubling back to general ES6. I don't know if this this um, project is going to lend itself well to ES6 stuff. We can look through and look for opportunities. Anyway, that's some ideas about future stuff. I would like to go eat lunch. Uh, let's see, I want that off for next time. Uh, thanks to, oh man, it was a, uh, Roald Pike, something like that, for bringing some friends and everybody else for hosting. Um, I'm going to have to, I don't know, I don't know if I'll see how he pronounces his name or not. Uh, so that is that. Uh, this is my old schedule. I am starting to take Tuesdays and Thursdays off to make sure I have time to get work done. And today, the afternoon, uh, I am out for an event. Uh, what do we have? I don't know if I have any straight up web dev stuff. right now. We've got some game dev. All right, well, if you're interested in game development, Uh, Demian Sky is working on a project called Song of the Ends. And last time I stopped there and there, he was talking through all, all of his code and stuff. So that's someplace cool to hang out. Look for someplace cool to hang out. Thanks for hanging out with me. Good night. Or, well, yeah. Good, good, good afternoon for me. Maybe it's good night for you or whatever it is wherever you are. Until next time.